This is the first of a series of videos where I'm going to demonstrate the workflow that I put together to do post-processing analysis of insect trachea scans used in our 2023 publication, uh, Comparative Anatomy of the Insect Tracheal System. Um, just as an example, here's some of the results that we get. This is a, a tracheal system of a termite, and we specifically use a 3D slicer. This is a relatively recent version of 3D Slicer. I tend to use the nightly versions um, or the preview versions. Uh, this one's only a few days old as of uh, the making of this video, Monday, October 2nd, 2023. Um, more information can be found on the Slicer website, uh, which is a, has a ton of information. Uh, the documentation is all very good. Um, in addition, I highly recommend uh, going over to the 3D Slicer community at discourse.slicer.org. Um, they're incredibly helpful. There's all kinds of people working on all different projects, ranging from humans to mice to insects. Um, so if you've got a question, chances are somebody else has either answered that question or has a similar question or can chime in on possible solutions. Um, so I highly recommend all of these resources for coming up to speed on Slicer. I'm going to assume for the sake of argument here with these videos that um, uh, people watching them are somewhat familiar with Slicer. Um, you know how to download it. Um, and also you know how to install extensions and do basic things like loading in files, things like that. I won't go into details of that because there are a ton of videos online that teach you all those kinds of things. I will say that these are the extensions that I use. Um, I use Slicer Morph quite a bit. Um, I do not do geometric morphometrics. However, there are a lot of utilities that Slicer Morph includes that I do use. Um, there's a bunch of other uh, um, extensions that I highly recommend that I do use a lot for various things, in particular Segment Editor Extra Effects. Um, that's really a treasure trove of different tools that you can use for doing segmentations. I will talk a teeny bit about system requirements. Um, my system here, this is a 2019 MacBook Pro, um, and I specifically got this model because I could max out the memory to 64 gigabytes, um, and it also has an 8 gigabyte graphics card. Um, these are very. This is very useful for volume rendering, and in general, the rule of thumb for how much RAM you need is you take the size of your volume and you multiply it by 10, and that's what you should be using. So if you've got a six gigabyte data set, 64 gigabytes will do you pretty well. Um, anything larger than that, you should, you should get more memory. More memory is always better. I'm going to go through an example of loading in a data set here uh, using an exported TIFF stack of a reconstructed volume. Um, I'm also gonna assume that people know in general what uh, micro CT terms are. For instance, you know what a reconstructed volume is as opposed to a uh, a set of projected images, um, you know what reconstruction is, and you know what voxel sizes are, and you know operation of your machine, things like that. So what we get out of our machine, uh, after we do a reconstruction, we have a TIFF stack, and then there's also a PCA file. Uh, we use a GE uh, Phoenix VTOMEX S240 machine, and uh, the file that comes out of it, the PCA file, the important information that we need here is the size of the voxels. Uh, in millimeters. Voxels are isometric, which means they are cubes. They're not elongated cubes like you sometimes get out of a medical scanner. So when I have the particular modules installed, all I need to do is just take the TIFF stack and drag and drop it on top of Slicer. And it says load using the image stacks module. I say yes. It brings up this panel here where I will then take my voxel size, copy and paste it here in both X, Y, and Z. Also, I want a full resolution volume, so it'll load in all the files and not skip any slicers or skip any, any uh, uh, pixels in each um, slice. And then it loads in the volume and you can see it here in uh, X, Y, and Z. I'll then uh, rename it because the name it gives here is basically the file name of the first TIFF file, and it's Grillablata Volume. Uh, actually, I'll call it Grillablata Unmask because I'm going to do some masking in a later video. And then I will save it. Slicer files for volumes are in NRRD format, nearly raw raster data. It is sort of the semi native format Slicer uses. Um, I highly recommend saving everything in that. You can save it as other things, um, as in a, a TIFF stack, but it's really kind of cumbersome to work with. So you should save things in NRD. Let me give the scene a name. 
and then we'll save it and then we're done.